here on the end. Sit up here on the end. Of it. Hi everyone, my name is Marie and I'm Equestria Plush, or a part of Equestria Plush, my um, husband and I do it along with my uh, two sons. The music that you are listening to is actually composed for me by my son down on the end, he's a music and film composer. He just got into the uh, EDM, he did uh, some sets out on the stage out in the, oh, I can't remember what it's called, but the one that's out in the foyer and was working on that, so that was kind of exciting. So um, what I was going to talk about today is um, pattern evolution. I've done a, a, a few different panels and most of the questions I usually get are about how do you make your patterns, how do you, uh, how do you get that to be like that? And um, I, I'm sorry? <laughs> by studying the show, um, yes, very much so. Um, I do have um, Tyler up here. He's with us today. He's a uh, brony, and he's going to talk a little bit later about being a brony and having plushes and what that's like and how fun it is, that kind of thing, which I'm sure a lot of you know already. It's a fun thing to do. Um, but anyway, I got started, um, I want to say, probably in about October of 2011. I worked with a lady who had a daughter, or has a daughter, that wanted to make OCs for her girlfriends for Christmas, but she didn't know how to sew. So I said, well, I could probably teach her to sew, no problem. So I went over um, one afternoon and she showed me you know, what she wanted to do and we kind of tried to make something. and. Um, it was, it was kind of an adventure to do that <laughs> because I'd never done um, uh, any kind of stuffed animals before. I'd always done um, clothing, mostly like wedding type dresses, things like of that nature, costume, reproductions, that kind of thing is what I did. And then, so I really didn't know a whole lot about My Little Pony except for my niece who watched Generation One, which was a long time ago. But my son here, he would be up at like, oh, dark early in the morning with his headsets on, talking to someone on the East Coast, watching My Little Pony. And I thought, what is he doing with this craziness? So then I thought, okay, well, when then when Jordan wanted to make the OCs, I really kind of dove into the My Little Pony world, and I just haven't come up since then. I mean, this is a fabulous fandom. I, I, it, people are nice. It just, uh, I, I love it. The show's wonderful. I'm sure all of you guys probably know that already. So anyway, I the first slide will show you. Um, this was the very first pony we made, um, right? I unfortunately was not able to actually bring them. I still have all of them. Um, I come, I live on the West Coast, so trying to get these here it was a little hard. But um, from the young lady's name is Jordan, and from her f drawing, we I made this very very two dimensional, and I thought it was really awesome when I. And uh, we kind of used that as the basis for the ponies that she ended up making as OCs for her girlfriends. I think the next picture. Yep, these are the OCs. And on those, the eyes and the uh, cutie marks, she did all of those by hand with embroidery thread. And she also had never done that either. So she actually sewed these all herself and did all the embroidery work. Uh, she didn't quite make Christmas like she wanted to. It took her a little longer than she thought. But um, her friends really, really love them. But you can see how um, they're cute, but not quite right. But uh, we had a good time with that. So then um, we, this is the next one I did, which I love this pony. I wish I should have brought it. It has um, felt eyes. We move, I moved to felt because I thought I wanted some three dimension in the eyes. And so that's completely layered. It has about four layers to it with the eyelash, the black part, and um, I was really pleased with it. I thought it was really awesome. It, this one, the uh, mane and the tail now have a little bit of volume. I made the mane and it was flat, 2D, but then I kind of scrunched it down and, with some, and made it 
a little more 3D, but it wasn't anything like this. But it was much better, and the tail I stuffed. Um, we also changed it in that we tried to put the little notches in the back. So that was a different in this pattern as opposed to the other. We also changed the ear. We changed the shape on that. So each time we made one, we tried to change a something a little different. Also at this point, we decided we needed to have um, a reference. And when you're creating any kind of art, well, I shouldn't say any kind of art because I cannot draw. So I won't even speak to drawing. But um, in plush making anyway, you have to have an inspiration. So we decided at Equestria Plush, we wanted to be show accurate. So for each pony that we do, we study the show, or watch the show really, and then we will study different um, segments of different parts of different shows that show the most um, personality of the pony that we're looking for. What, how they might be smiling or squinting or the enthusiasm of that particular scene, and that's how we model each pony, each of the main six and the few background ponies that I'm able to do. And that's what um, we choose as our inspiration. So we always try to have that around so that we have it as a reference. So you might want to always think about what you want your inspiration to be. So this is when we decided ours. So this is the next one that we did. And this one is um, we changed the face. We tried to figure out how we were going to give our ponies the correct curvature for their nose. And the manes and tails on this one are um, completely 3D now, all stuffed. There are two pieces with a third piece underneath to create the volume. Um, it had it is all of the uh, detail lines on it. And uh, we've got the shape of the legs more. We noticed in um, the TV show that the ponies kind of stand with just a little bit of a, a, of a curvature on their back legs. So we added that in, and we um, brought up the tummy a little bit. So on that one, that was a change. And I believe, oh, and this one, on the eyes, we used printable fabric. Because the um, uh, felt that I did on the last one was just really kind of not practical because of the cutting out. I wasn't good enough at cutting the tiny little bits and that, like the eyelashes, they would tear off. And I just, I wasn't good at it. And the fabric wasn't very friendly. So um, I thought, oh, you can buy fabric and you can have it printed. And then I would cut it out and I would applique it onto the pony. And I still left the eyelashes free. So they're kind of like these really awesome eyelashes. And I still, to this day, love that, that the eyelashes can be separate. I think that's really cool. But it really wasn't, like, it wasn't soft and cuddly, and it was kind of hard and eh, not that great. So on the next slide, I think we'll show, ah, this one was a um, kind of a complete redo on the pattern. We realized that it needed to be a little plumper. It was still, like, they were too skinny, and the um, ponies are much more plump and kind of cutesy. So this one, we changed the width of the pattern, and we also changed to embroidery on the cutie marks and on the um, eyes. So, and again, there was another ear change on this, and um, there, I believe we also changed the male manes and tails on this one as well, made them even more voluminous, because Pinkie Pie, of course, is cotton candy, so she needed more volume. So we changed that. We also brought up the, um, on the back leg, the hawk. We brought that up in more into proportion and put more of a swoop on the back end of the pony. So we're getting closer, We it, it, and it, it's looking a little better. Um, between what you saw from the beginning to this one, I'd say there was probably about 19 or 20 pattern changes that, that you're only seeing just a few. I have bags of things that just were, didn't go right <laughs> and finish them. So that happens a lot. Okay. This slide is much closer to what we currently have. It, it has um, the narrower legs, the swoop is right at the, at the um, hip, the hawk is right, the stance is right, she's standing up more, she looks a little more perky, a little happier. Um, 
we went back and re-looked at our inspiration and realized that when we were made uh, the previous pattern change, we really weren't paying attention at, like we should have been to our inspiration. So we went back to where we should be and we, um, and we uh, put more of the, the, put her head up, made her looking up so she's looking out at us. And that was um, kind of lost a little bit. And then, I think that's it. I had like what, yeah, it's like the, the this one and then it's more recent one. Okay, and then this is the last one, this one video. Okay, that's it. All right, so this is, um, we have one more still? Or the video is done? Okay, so this is our most current pattern, what you see here, and I should have brought Pinky, and I did not, shame on me. Um, I'm pretty, we're pretty pleased with her. We think we kind of caught the um, inspiration that we wanted to, that we were using. Um, we haven't done much more with the actual pony pattern. Uh, we do a lot of tweaking on the manes and tails. Almost every single time I get ready for a new show, I will manipulate or change the mains. Not necessarily on Pinky anymore. I think that I've got her down pretty good. But um, the most recent one was uh, Rarity. We did a whole redo on that. Um, I was completely pleased with it. And the young lady, Jordan, who was our inspiration, part of my inspiration from the beginning, she actually works with me all the time. She's always at my house helping me out. She has a lot of this stuffing, which is an art into itself. She kept insisting that rarity was not show accurate, and I'm like, yes, it is, yes, it is. And then we went back and started doing some studying and found out, no, it really wasn't. So we totally redid that one. You can see that down in my, in, um, my booth. This is um, what it is now, so hopefully it's a little more accurate. But you, um, if you don't keep your inspiration close by, you, it's so easy to be like on DA or, or on the internet in general and just be admiring other people's um, artwork of the different characters and fall in love with it and start modeling your work after it and forgetting what your original inspiration is. Of course, it's always, you can always change your inspiration. Totally is fine to do that. But just keep in mind that uh, you can get pulled off where you want to go very easily. So. Um, so that's Pinky. Um, she's kind of my, my pony that I use when I want to change something on the body. So I kind of just have an evolution of Pinkies. She's kind of the, the girl I do that on. And the next thing we have is going to be a, um, a short little thing that you have running right here. That's going to show you kind of how I, I put it together from cutting the fabric all the way out, all the way to stuffing it. So it's a little thing to show you. That's embroidery, the hooping it on the embroidery. Eyes first, then the cutie marks. Cutting out. Cutting out is very important. The ears. Now, something like the ears, you would think, oh, it's just ears. That, that's, there's, there's nine steps to the ears. It's uh, to make them stand up the way they should and be soft and the right shape and be able to sew them in correctly. Little things that you don't think of when you're, when you're embarking on uh, making plushies that you would just not think would be something you'd have to put a lot of effort into, but you do to get them to be the way they should be. There's going to be some pictures in here that's going to show some of my pinning. Pinning is so important. If any of you are really looking to try to make plushies, pinning is so important. I pin every quarter inch, and I've been making the ponies since 2011, and I still pin every quarter inch because the fabric itself moves. It, and Oh, no, it gets crazy. It wants to do a dance if you don't pin it. Stuffing is also an art form all in itself. There's uh, lots of choices out there for stuffing materials, and um, I've tried all of them that I could possibly find. And it doesn't really matter if you don't have the stuffing technique correct, it's going to make little hard lumps that you just cannot get out. 
and it's going to feel hard on, on when you're touching it. It's going to feel like this little rock in there. So stuffing is is an art form all in itself. It takes time to get it to be just how you want it. Yeah. Always put the manes on first and the tails go on last. You know, just the progression. If it were a uh, a rainbow dash, the first thing I would put on would be wings and then the manes and tail. And there she is. I'd say on average a pony takes me probably about a week, week and a half to make. Um, just uh, all the little things that have to be done and the time that it takes, that's about what it takes. Sometimes you do a little faster, sometimes a little slower, but it, it's about that long. Um, I make all of mine out of minky. If you're going to start making them and you have no sewing um, experience or just a little, I would definitely suggest starting with um, fleece so that you can get used to how fabric will stretch, although Minky stretches a lot more than uh, fleece does. And if you're really inexperienced, I would really start with cotton, just so you can get an idea of how to get your machine to behave the way you want it to, get a feel for the way it stitches, how things work, how to trim things, because it's not very expensive and you can just mess with it and throw away and then move on to your um, more expensive, harder fabrics to uh, sew on. So if anyone has any questions, I'd be totally happy to answer those. Yes, sir? Uh, the princesses, they take me a couple of weeks, two to three weeks. There's, uh, there's a lot in those guys. And just stuffing them is, is at least two or three days because um, of, of the clumping problem. It, you have to be willing to just relax and go, okay, it's not going to work out anymore, so I'm going to back up and leave it alone for a minute and then come back to it. So they take quite a while. Yeah. Yes. You've said several times that stuffing is an art in and of itself. Mm -hmm. Can you elaborate on that a little bit? I mean, I, I never stuffed anything more complicated than a pillow, so I, I'm thinking it's stuffing. What's difficult about it? Well, that, that's interesting. And I like say for Luna, for instance, she's very tall. The legs, or my Celestia, I, sh I wish I had one to bring. I, I didn't. They all went to their new homes. He has one there. They have very long, thin legs. So <laughs> you've right got there. to be able to put some in there and get more in there and more and more and more. And as you're moving down such a small area, it'll start to clump. So you can't just take and put like a big bunch of stuffing in. You actually have to take and put maybe the size of a, of, a, of a small cotton ball, and then you put it in there and you work it down. And then the next piece. And it tends to want to like be all on one side. And then you gotta try to get over here. And you're also going through a very small opening to get to that long thing. So um, I use um, different uh, thicknesses of dowels to manipulate the stuffing. I actually will put it in and then press it down and swirl it around. Never, I never push it down like that. I put it in and I swirl it around. Put it in, swirl it around. And it, for the most part, will keep it nice and smooth and no lumps in it. You also have to be really careful. You can't like be death grip with your hand. You'll have all these fingerprints along each leg, which is, trust me, I've done it a hundred times. I had to pull it all out and, and put it back in. But, and then also controlling the stretch of the fabric because um, I cut all of mine with this, uh, on the long grain, so it stretches this way. Um, but I have a particular manufacturer that I get um, my Celestia fabric made for me, and it stretches uh, both ways so that I can make her uh, long and lean and, and that regalness. So it, it, it's kind of like that. It's really interesting. I tried using um, cluster before and it's not uh, strong enough to make her stand. So she has, they have to, they're more of a sculpture than they really are a plush, like a squeezy toy. Yes, sir. 
<laughs> Any particular reason why you uh, embroider first and then sew on? Um, I may not have, maybe I didn't represent that well. The um, what, Like, why do you embroider it, then cut it out, as opposed to cut it out, then embroider it? Oh, okay. Um, well, uh, the... Um, if I, if I were to cut it out before I embroidered it, there wouldn't be enough fabric to hold it tautly in the um, embroidery hoops. So we embroider it first so that there's something for the embroidery hoop to hold on to. Otherwise, we, I, uh, maybe I could attach it to maybe stabilizer of some sort, perhaps. I had never thought of that. I, we just have always done it that way. Is there a place where we can steal, I mean, borrow your patterns? <laughs> my patterns, yeah. No, not my patterns particularly, no. I don't give out my patterns. I think you'll find that most plush makers don't actually give their patterns out. However, I have a very good source for a pattern. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with DA or SD. Um, in e either of those places, there's a young lady. She, her, she goes by Valley Violet. and. Her whole thing is making patterns and selling them. Her patterns are extremely detailed. Um, I ordered one once because I just wanted to know what it was that she, what, what her product was. So before I started recommending it, and uh, it came with 16 pages of instruction. So every single thing that you could imagine you would need to know in order to sew a plush is in her um, directions. They're a bit overwhelming, but very thorough. The pattern comes with it as well. And um, a lot of people actually use hers to get started with. They make them, I, I, in the vendor hall, I saw several people I know are using Valley Violet's pattern. Um, it's a good pattern, and you can use that to um, make your own, so you can understand pattern making. You not necessarily copy hers, but you could um, either make a pony with it, so you also understand how to make one, and then how you might want yours to look. You could change it up or know how to make your own. He's going to want you to say that again. <laughs> is it harder to make um, a big plushie or a small one? Okay. Definitely the smaller ones. These ones, I only make as panel giveaways. They're like exclusive. There's three on the planet. Here's number three of Pinky. Number three of her. Number three of her. They're extremely hard, the smaller ones, because the seam allowance is, is smaller. The trying to stuff them is smaller. Trying to get the... Um, the accuracy is much harder. It, I mean, if you want to make ones that are like, um, I'm sure you've seen them if you were in the vendor hall, the little chirpy ones, oh, they're so adorable. They're like little, something like that, I'm sure is much easier. But if you want it to be show accurate, it's much harder, much, much harder. Need someone over here, anyone? How many hours a day does it take, on average, for you to make the plushies? Like, like how much personal time do I spend doing it, or how much does it? A couple weeks, but I just wondered how many hours per day. How many hours do I work on it a day? Um, that's a good question. Um, if it's, um, I, I have a full-time job, so I obviously don't uh, work on them all day long. On um, Saturday or Sunday, I'll get up and I'll maybe get up work on it from about 8 a.m. to about 3 a.m. Yeah. 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 Mm hmm I work, yeah, all day, into the evening, yeah. I kind of do marathon sewing. I kind of get, you kind of get going on it, and you get into a thing, and you're like, just, and you work on it. I know that sounds crazy, but I don't always do that, maybe, maybe about one or so, but I usually work all morning, and then stop for lunch, and kind of relax a little bit, then get back into it. I don't, I'm not a big TV watcher, except for My Little Pony, those kind of things. I don't spend a lot of time watching TV and commercials and all that kind of good stuff. Oh, we're going to give him a workout today. <laughs> um, do you recommend hand sewing or using a sewing machine? I, I would imagine it depends on 
um, your personal preference. I couldn't imagine doing it all by hand because it would take so long. I do know people who do that. I would probably recommend a machine just because the, I think it would probably be stronger and last longer. But um, if you were a fabulous hand sewer, I would think you could do that. That would be fine. Since you're standing there. You said you work from, you said you work from 3 p.m. to 3 a.m. No, no, 8 a.m. Okay, 8, 8, 8 a.m. to 3 a.m. And then I'll All right. work 8 a.m. But that's why you, do you, how long you work. I would call that dedication. And by the, what I saw of your work, mm -hmm. it's beautiful. Oh, thank you. Thank you. It's very nice. Thank you. Yeah. I don't do that every day. I do that like on Saturday and Sundays. <laughs> sure. Um, um, do, you do, like, do you do like custom plushy, plushes or no? Yes, um, I do do OCs, and um, unfortunately, I didn't bring any with me. I should have. They're on my top shelf at home, and in the hurry to get here and packed, um, I completely forgot to bring some of my OCs. But I do do those. I do, yes. They take much more time. Um, that's something we were, I work out with that person because usually it's a brand new pattern for the mane and tails. So, yes. Sure. The lady next to him. And then we're going to go over here. The lady here, and then we'll do here. All right, I don't sew, so this is a dumb question. Okay. But when you sew, do you sew inside out? And if you do sew inside out, how do you turn it? And how, you know what I mean? Oh, it's, everything is sewn inside out, definitely. And then I, uh, you leave an opening wherever you're going to leave your opening, and you pull it all out that way. But yeah, everything is done inside out. Well, except for the hand sewing, like putting the manes and tails on. But the body itself and everything is all done inside out. You just, leave, you just leave a part of your seam open and you turn it out through that open part of the seam. And then you sew the seam closed by hand. I'm sorry, yes, by hand. I'm sorry, yeah, by hand. Okay, so young lady, I think over here, this young lady. Two questions. Sure. Um, what is a good source for the fleece? I know most of the fleece you can buy in like Hancock fabrics or something is too thick. Yeah. It's, it's usually very thick. Um, what is there a good online source for, for fleece for the for fleece Mickey? that you use? Okay. Well, yeah, for for something that would be suitable for plushes. Okay, um, so um, I don't use fleece. I, I this is this is Minky. Yeah, and there's actually several places online that you can get it. There's a place in um, I call fabric.com. There I believe they're in Oregon if I'm remembering right, and um, they're pretty fabulous. They um, usually have what they say they have online and they get it to you in a reasonable amount of time. There's also another place I use, um, it is called uh, the Minky Boutique and they are in Georgia. They take a bit longer to get you your product, but um, they're, they're a good source. Um, I'm currently um, probably moving more into having my Minky made for me, so that's kind of out of the country. I'm, just, I'm working on that now because I want some certain colors and things. I've, I have found that it is hard to, from any of the major sources, to get consistent color. Each one, each bolt will be a different color, and I really need, I, I want consistency, so I'm, I'm kind of moved on into ordering my own fabrics. And also, when you, I noticed that you had the pony finished, and then you attached the mane. Do you yes. hand sew it on? Yes. Okay. Yes. And what sort of stitch do you use? I just Whip use, stitch I, use or a, I use a running stitch for the most part, okay. and then about every third running stitch, I use a lock stitch, just in case someone pops it or something, then it won't go and come yeah. off and be crazy. Okay. Thank you. Let me go over over here. I think use on this area. Just pick one. It's totally fine. Um, what's the easiest pony to start on? Like, if you're just learning. The easiest pony. Well, all of, the ponies are go all of the ponies are going to be equally difficult if you're talking about body design because for the most part, like the, the main six anyway, all have the same body. So that none of that is going to be easier as far as that goes. Um, for the main, that'd be interesting. Let me, let me think about that for a minute. I want to say Pinkie Pie would probably be your easiest main as far as and tail for designing. But attaching is not easy. Because she's so full, her hair is so full, sewing these, this area down on the full size pinky is really hard. You have to use a curved needle because you have to be able to get in like this. And 
it's not that easy to attach. Um, any of the other six, though, are not as difficult to attach to the pony. But for design-wise, Pinky would be the easiest. Um, like, I think I might have missed this part, but when do you put on the horn? The tail is the last thing I put on. So you put the horn on oh, after I'm the sorry, mane? the horn. Um, let's see. I do pony, then the smile, and then um, if it's, I, I would attach the horn at that point. After I put the smiles and the little nose, then I put the horn. If it isn't a horn, I put the, the wings. Yeah, then, then the mane and tail. Is it hard to get the hair to curl like on Rarity and Fluttershy? Mm, no, not too. Well, it's, it's all in making the pattern. Where Fluttershy's, it's um, her hair is a one piece pattern. It only has one piece. And the way that it's sewn together, you know, like if you took a piece of paper and you took a cut in it and you went like this, then it makes a cone and it kind of folds up. So the way her hair is designed is similar, where when I pull it around to make it and sew it, it makes it come up. Now, Rarity, obviously, is going to have to have wire in it. She has wire in her um, hair to keep this shape. You could do curls without wire, but they're going to have to be um, sewn onto each other or sewn onto the pony, and then you're not going to be able to see that it's two colors. So it's kind of a, an, art, an artistic choice um, there. I know when I first started making them, I, I kind of got a lot of pullback from the community on it being um, having wire in it, but I just kind of stuck to it because that was my vision and it doesn't seem to be that big of a deal anymore. Um, it is stainless steel so it doesn't rust um, and then the wire when it enters into the pony is all encased in um, polyurethane tubing so there's no metal in the pony. It can't poke out, can't hurt you or anything like that. Plushies? Uh, I have you... not done spike yet. No. No. Not yet. I haven't, I, I, unfortunately, I just have not had time to venture out of the pony realm yet. I've been very busy. I'd like to, though. Uh, my question is more about the filling inside. Like, uh, I know sometimes, it's pretty much, it's uh, much uh, rarer in uh, blushies, but sometimes the, the filling inside gets, like, in bunch, and it's, like, how, how do you fill them to avoid that? How do you... Yeah, that's what I was talking about earlier. It, it's really technique on stuffing to keep it from bunching like that. Um, it, by using the dowels and using a, a uh, circular motion, I keep from getting those bunches. Um, if, if it's a bunch that's happened since your plush because you've you know, just had it for a while and you're handling it, I mean, I'm not quite sure other than opening it and restuffing it how you might change that or repair it. Washing mostly, yeah. I, I haven't put any of mine in the washer yet. Uh, I mean, I, that's why I'm saying, like, for sure, Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. I actually, yeah. I actually recommend when um, people buy my plush that you um, put, if, if you're going to be someone who's going to like, carry it around a lot with you, you're actually going to be, like, taking it places and handling it and doing things that you put a bit of Scotch Guard on it. If you put Scotch Guard on it, the, the kind that you would put on your upholstery, then water, um, hand oils, things like that, really don't get stuck on it, and you can just wipe it off. And also for cleaning it, you can um, easily clean Minky. Minky is so resilient. With just a little bit of laundry soap and water in a toothbrush, and you just kind of get in there and get it off, and then take a wet, or not wet, a damp washcloth, and go back over to kind of get that laundry soap off. Then you blow dry it and you use a brush, a hairbrush, a clean hairbrush, and kind of get real rough with it and blow dry it. And then just let it almost dry, then let it set. And then once it's, it's completely dry, you just take a lint brush and you go like that and it's like brand new. The fabric is fabulously res resilient. I wish I could throw it in the washer, but I'm just really afraid about that because that's hand, the hand sewing. I'm not sure about that. Um, I just wanted to give... Um, the young man, an opportunity to kind of talk about what it's like to be a uh, brony that enjoys having plushes in his life and how that goes for just a few minutes. Okay, I guess I can't hide behind Luna anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
My name's Tyler, and I actually just recently bought Rona from Murray. Mm -hmm. I bought her at Everfree Northwest in Seattle, in Washington. And sh there she offered if I would like to speak with, speak at the panel. And just being a brony has changed a lot for me. I used to be very hideaway behind whatever I can. But now, I actually have a friend circle I can hang out, hang out, speak with. A few of them are in the crowd there if he wants to raise their hand. Okay. Don't patronize. Um, so, we hang out. I used to be alone all the time. But now, I feel a lot happier. And having plushies is another way that I feel happy. They're, they're soft, they're, they don't hurt you. They're safe. I really have no idea what to say anymore. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. I just thought it would be kind of awesome to give someone an opportunity to kind of see what it's like to sit up in, in front of you and uh, maybe talk about something that they are really passionate about. I know it's hard for a lot of us as um, being bronies to talk about it or to really just in our normal lives have it be a part of it. I mean, I take my, I have, um, I, I take my plushes everywhere. I mean, everywhere. I, I do a lot of um, traveling that is actually not connected to um, brony cons or, or, I'm sorry, conventions in general. I do um, marathon running, I, we do, I do, so I go a lot of places, and I always take my plushes. I actually attach them on my uh, running gear, and I run with them, they run marathons with me. And I have people, you would be surprised how many bronies there are. They'll be they'll stop me and say, can we take a picture? And I'm like, okay, you know we're running for time, right? But okay. <laughs> and um, so, it, and I, I don't hide it. I at work, um, my, my regular world life, I, people know, and, and sometimes they're like, what? And you kind of start talking to them about it, and I tell them, like, how wonderful you guys are as a group. And they just find it really hard to believe. And so I think it's just an awesome to be able to have people around me all the time that are like you guys. I mean, don't, I'm sure you must enjoy this. Um, I actually have a local brony group in Las Vegas that's kind of branched out to like, two sections now. and. Um, it's, they're awesome. It's just, it's really great to have other people who want to be nice. <laughs> so. Make friends. Yes, make friends. Is there anything else that you'd like to say? I really cannot think of anything. Okay. <laughs> Did anyone have any other questions? They're just dying to ask. Oh, oh. Young lady there in the purple. The most difficult that I've had to make I would say the most difficult would be, um, uh, it would be in between Trixie and Cadence. Trixie because her mane is, although it looks just blue and white, it has, it comes together at so many points that are visually, you can see when you own the plush, that it has to be exact, and you're talking about lots of seams, it, it was very difficult. Cadence because um, of the way I chose to design her. Um, when you see her in the cartoon, it, it, the last part of her, her mane is yellow, and then it has like this purple outline, and that's just to delineate it from its background. But when you make her, most plush makers, not all, but most plush makers just make it yellow, which is totally fine, but I thought, no, it really needs that outline. So I put a purple outline on the edge, and so I sew it into the seam, but the outside edge has to be hand sewn down because it's so narrow, it's only a quarter inch to represent that line that the artist is putting in on the, car on the cartoon. So it must be there. Anyone else? Yes, ma'am. They're encased in polyurethane tubing, so they're not going anywhere. Yeah, they're, it, it, they, they can't, it can't uh, do that. Actually, the first plushes I ever made, I, I just had the wire in the body and realized, oh, this is not going to be good, but if kids buy it, although I don't sell them, you know, with a, this is a child's toy, but if they did, so we immediately 
went and decided what are we going to do to fix this and we put it in in polyurethane tubing. Particularly, you're talking about like in, in sewing it mostly. Is I, uh, no, not particularly because I've actually been sewing since I was very, very young. So most, I mean, most of the things I had learned already. I would say, on those lines, the biggest thing would be um, learning to work with minky. Minky is like working with velvet. I mean, I don't even touch velvet. Someone wants something made out of velvet. Boy, you're going to be someone special to get that. So the, this is like working with velvet. So I guess that would probably would have been the biggest thing. That's why when I talked about pinning, oh, I pin, 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 pin. Otherwise, it just moves. Uh, every time I don't pin, boom, it's a problem. So I just do it. Yes, sir? Oh, yes, I totally want the, I, I want those. Um, I know they're definitely on the radar for this winter I am to make those. I have quite a few. I, I apologize for not having a lot of new ones this con. I, um, I ended up doing three conventions this year, and one of them I was kind of surprisingly did, so I wasn't able to work on a lot of new designs. I did get Fleur um, out, and um, so that was pretty exciting. I was just by the skin of our teeth. So we're kind of going to be running out of time, and we definitely want to do the, uh, the giveaway. So unless there's anything super important that someone wants to ask, I think we're going to move to that. Everything good? Okay, awesome. Huh? Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. No, I haven't had time to um, move away from the pony um, pattern. What, what you're talking about is like taking a blank piece of paper and looking at a, a picture and deciding how am I going to create that pattern. Pattern creating takes probably two to three months for me, for us. I mean, it took us, I, I guess I just, I actually didn't say that. It, it's about from where I started to where I am now, I have about 30 pattern revisions that I'm willing to admit to. <laughs> so it's, it, it's a really long process to get it right. So no, I, I unfortunately have not been able to venture out of Pony yet. I want to move, to, I want to get to the, the little fillies so bad, so I think that's probably where we'll go next. We have a few last people. We're just going to make sure that they get tickets. Oh, okay. All right. Um, hello. Uh, anyone who came in just, you know, a little bit late and didn't get a raffle ticket, could you please raise your hand? Ooh, quite a pit. Um, all right. So the last people that did not have their ticket, please line up here. All right. The basic rule is that you'll uh, get the ticket, you'll rip it in half, and put half in the bag of the pony you want. All right, go ahead. And if you come up to get a second ticket, then you'll make Fluttershy cry. people that might need to get a ticket. So if there's anyone else who is dying to ask a question, I can answer that. You, uh, if you, when you get your ticket, you rip it in half and you put half of it in the bag of the pony you uh, want. Me, um, she asked me it about how I made half. my patterns for the manes and the tails. 
Um, most of the time, it's just the same as the pony. It's uh, just paper. Um, and we will take it and we'll kind of cut out what we think it, we want it to look like. And we actually put that, just put the paper on the top of the pony and kind of start from there. I make a lot of the manes and tails out of fleece to start with to kind of get a feel for what it might look like. And then we um, do some adjustments from there. Uh -huh. But it's really kind of, the, the manes and tails are really take a it's long like time it, to perfect. Like, That's one of the harder ones. Um, I don't necessarily give size choice. It's kind of, I, usually I ask for your design sheet and from that I can kind of tell, okay, well they're more the size of a princess. Do we need to adjust a princess pattern or is it more of a pony size? So I, I kind of do that with, when it comes to OCs, we kind of go back and forth. If it was a if, if if it was a mare, yeah, yeah, it would never be this size, never. It would be that size or princess size, yeah. Hmm. Inside of which plus? What's inside it? Um, just this, it's the same. It's the stuffing. It's ju it's just this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just the technique of stuffing that makes it strong enough. Yes. You have to speak up. I can't hear her. I can't hear her. I'm sorry. I would love to answer, but I can't hear what you're asking me. I'm sorry. I can't hear her. Could you repeat it for her? Do you the, do, uh, it, well, if, if you go on DA, there's lots of um, uh, art, uh, plush artists out there that are doing giveaway contests all the time. So you can... Um, look on DA and look for uh, plush giveaways and you'll find just lists of, of new artists and different things that are giving uh, things away. Okay. okay. Awesome. So everybody has their ticket in now? Not you. You need a ticket. Oh, you need a ticket. Awesome. Oh, take one and put one. So you, so you take one of the sides. Okay. Okay. So we'll start with Pinky. I'm gonna, I'm gonna shake her up real good, and I'm gonna have Tyler pick the, the pick, pick out the. Uh, and you can call it out. How's that? All right. Okay, then. Two, four, two, eight, two, five. Yay! Hey. Awesome! Congratulations. I can put your... Say Pinkie Pie. <laughs> Pinkie Pie. <laughs> Pinkie Pie looks really weird. Perfect. Good. Awesome. Congratulations. And we do we're going to do Rarity next. Do the same thing. We'll let Tyler pick that out. Next ticket, two, four, two, five, zero, two. Yay. There we go. Say fabulosity. That's right. <laughs> All right, and last one will be Fluttershy. Yay! Yay. Yay. OK. 
Okay. Last one is two, four, two, seven, eight, three. Say Fluttershy Smash. Fluttershy! Smash! Congratulations. Thank you everyone for coming. I hope you enjoyed BronyCon. I know I have. I love doing my panels on the last day because I just love seeing everyone's faces and all the joy they've had for the weekend. I hope to see you next year. Enjoy the closing ceremonies. <laughs>